Let's start talking about mammography, fluoroscopy, and computed tomography. We'll begin by discussing each imaging modality, focusing on its basic physics, how it works, image quality, and the artifacts present. The basic physics related to it and everything that is related to it. Personally, I really like fluoroscopy. It has some interesting ideas in its mechanisms and physics that require a bit of focus. So, I hope you all are ready to concentrate with me because there are some aspects of mammography that need to be understood well. I just want to check if there are any issues with this. No, go ahead, Dr. Islam. All right, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Honestly, when I talk about mammography, I talk about pressed imaging. Pressed imaging means that you are imaging the pressed. I'm saying that you are imaging the... When you look at a breast image, you find that it contains tissues. With low physical density, meaning you will find fat glandular tissues. And even if there is a tumor or a mass, their densities are not high. The differences between them are also not significant. In contrast, for example, when we were doing regular X-ray radiography, I was imaging the kidneys and bones, and there are significant and clear differences between the organs present. In the breast, you are talking about soft tissue. It has fat and soft tissue, all with low physical densities. If you want to differentiate between these different densities, you need to consider that the machine itself as well as the positioning of the breast during imaging must be done in a certain way. So today, if I am thinking, I need to see the attenuation of these organs or the differences that exist. When I say attenuation, what do I mean? The difference in their ability to absorb radiation indicates the difference between glandular tissue and, for example, if I have a doctor carcinoma or fat. The difference between fat and glandular tissue and doctor carcinoma, for instance, regarding the absorption of radiation, shows that the attenuation of radiation increases in certain areas of X-ray energy and decreases in others. This is the starting point when I think about imaging something and the things inside what I am imaging are all similar in their properties and characteristics. I need to distinguish between them, so I must start looking at what distinguishes them. The distinguishing factor is that I go to the X-ray energy range from 0 to 100 kV and observe the attenuation coefficient. When it becomes high, it means there has been significant attenuation for fat. What about glandular tissue? What about Dr. Carcinoma? I find that the differences in attenuation here have a high value, while here it is lower. Here, the energy is lower, and there is a difference in the low energy range between 20 and 30 kilo electron volts. As the energy increases, you start working in a different energy range, providing higher energy, which improves Compton scattering over the photoelectric effect, increases penetration, and reduces absorption and attenuation. Thus, attenuation decreases, and the difference in absorption between the various tissues in the breast also decreases. The main concept for me now is that I want to produce X-ray working in a low energy range. Why? Because the external energy will allow me to discriminate between the different tissues inside the breast. So we agree on this principle. That I work with low energy, unlike X-ray radiography, computed tomography, or fluoroscopy. For example, we are talking about a range of 20-35 in this area. Good. That's point one. Point two. When we go back to x-ray production and the things we talked about, uh, I find that I have... Let's talk about something called the x-ray spectrum, which is the relationship between the intensity of radiation and the intensity, meaning the number of x-ray photons, and the x-axis representing energy in kilo electron volts.
The external photons from the X-ray tube carry these energies. For example, every 1,000 photons carry an energy of 10, while 50 photons carry an energy of 20, and so on. Thus, the number is not the same for every X-ray tube externally. This is polyenergetic, and not all of them are equal in the same number. This means that not 1,000 carry 10 and 1,000 carry 20. No, this varies and arises at the uh, X-ray spectrum, which is when we talked about it being like this. The value, which is the kilo electron volt value, the maximum value you set while operating, say 120, means that the X-ray photon that exits has a maximum X-ray energy of 120. The X-ray photon with an energy of 120 is adjusted to 110, remaining at the highest X-ray energy of 110, and so on. However, you will find that the number of photons carrying, the highest energy is low, while we always said that the highest intensity here is at this peak, which carries an energy of what we previously mentioned as being from half to a third of the maximum energy. So, if the maximum is 100 and 420, then this energy is, for example, 40 kilo electron volts, meaning most photons carry 40 kilo electron volts. We call this spectrum Bremsstrahlung radiation, which is the breaking radiation. Why does it occur? It arises from the interaction between an electron coming from the cathode and the electric field surrounding the nucleus. He experienced deflection just like when you take a ball and hit it against a wall. What happens? The ball hits the wall and then falls to the ground. What happened is that the ball lost part of its energy in the wall. Now, the part of the energy lost by the electron due to being a negatively charged electron and interacting with a very strong positive field caused it to deviate from its path, resulting in energy loss known as X-ray, which is the braking radiation. It's like when you are driving a car and suddenly hit the brakes. You experience deflection. Now, depending on how close the interaction area is between the electron and the electric field around the nucleus, this area is referred to as zones. The closer you are to the nucleus in a certain zone, the higher the energy that is released. The distant zones have a higher probability of interaction because their density is greater than that of the zone close to the nucleus. Therefore, the photon emitted from these distant zones has lower energy compared to the number of photons that will be emitted with lower energies. The maximum energy is quite high, and this is indeed what is evident, which is the half to third maximum energy. So, this means there is something that is emitted. Is there anything else in my X-ray spectrum? Back. There are spikes called characteristic. What is this characteristic? Because instead of the electron colliding or interacting with the Coulomb field of the nucleus, it brings the electron from the K shell and ejects it. Then the electron from the L shell drops down to fill the vacancy, resulting in a difference in energy that produces X-ray radiation X-ray characteristics differ from tungsten to molybdenum depending on the type of material. Each material has its own specific X-ray. This depends on the binding energy of the electron that was in the shell to the nucleus. The stronger the binding, the higher the energy required to remove the electron from its position. The energy difference that is released manifests as X-rays, which I refer to here as the spikes that appeared, and I named them alpha and beta. Alpha refers to the electron that was emitted from the shell, while beta refers to the one emitted from the nucleus. So, 
it is always related to the electron in the shell. The energy difference was significantly greater indeed, so it is considered advantageous. Up to this point, everything is indeed fine in every aspect. In mammography specifically, I want to use an anode target that should allow electrons effectively striking it while ensuring that photons emitted are precisely within a certain range, which helps in distinguishing different characteristics present in breast tissues as shown earlier on the curve graph representation. Therefore, ultimately, and importantly, I desire X-ray photons being emitted within this specific range to enhance contrast and produce a good image quality overall. Then what will you do? You will acquire suitable anodic targets because research found molybdenum naturally produces its spectrum emissions possessing distinct characteristic X-rays. 17.5 keV and the other at 19.4 keV are the characteristic energies. So I draw the spectrum of molybdenum and there is a part here for high energy which is this area and a part here for low energy which is this area and there is a part here for the characteristic. The photon is in the characteristic area, meaning I have a high part that is after the characteristic and a part for the characteristic and a part here for low. I always say that I can use a filter. This filter removes soft radiation. It removes the soft energy of the radiation. Removing the soft energy of the radiation. The spectrum is not actually like this. It has a part here that was removed due to filtration. So, what do I want to do? I want to take just the characteristic part because the range here is 17.5 to 19, which is the region I want to work on in my image. To get my image, what should I do? How should I spend? They told me to use a filter this filter should be made from a specific material and have a certain K edge. Do you remember the K edge when we talked about the dye? I mentioned that the dye has its electron inside the shell and when a photon with energy close to that electron hits it, it creates a photoelectron leading to attenuation and absorption. Do you remember that point? I said. I had a range of 33 or 34 keV, which is the K edge. So they told you to use a filter that also has a specific K edge. What will you benefit from this? The benefit is that this filter will absorb energy slightly higher than its K edge. So you effectively remove the high energy. At the same time, its thickness can absorb the soft radiation. So you eliminate the low energy. So you will have the husband of the husband too. The soft radiation is filtered using a material with a specific thickness because its energy is weak, so it gets attenuated. By doing this, you reduce that part. Now, regarding the energy you need, it should be less than the characteristic zone. You need it, but I don't need it, so I will remove it. This will reduce the high part, which will give you low contrast. Why not use the high? because the high has high penetration power, which will reduce the difference in what is present and a good image will not appear. I want to use the range that gives me the highest difference in tissues. So it will reduce the difference in the tissues present and I won't get a good image. I want to use the range that gives me the highest difference in tissues. So I will use a filter, for example, from molybdenum, the same filter from my target with a K edge of 20 kV everything below 20, which is in this area, like 17.5 and 19.4, will not approach the K edge, but will have the energy to pass through. The energy that allows it to pass through will decrease, 
Why will it decrease? Because it is already low in energy, right? With the thickness of the filter, it will stop. Of course, not all of it, but it will stop part of it. Now, the part that is in the high energy is essentially the part that will come out in the spectrum. It's not large. Why? Because I am operating my machine at 35 kilovolts. What does that mean? It means that the maximum photon emitted in the spectrum is 35. So the high energy part, you understand, will be close. Part of it will be close to the K edge of the filter. The filter can provide attenuation. So it's as if you have removed a significant part of the high energy and a significant part of the low energy and you have kept the characteristic part, which is what you will rely on for imaging. Is this clear to you, doctors, or not? In the same range, I am talking about the same range because this is the range I want, doctor. This is the range I want that gives me the maximum difference between us. The filter will also take a part. Sure, 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 but the reduction that will happen at very low energy and high energy is greater than the zone I want. It will inevitably remove that, but I want to ensure that most of my beam is in this range, at this level, which will allow me to discriminate between different tissues. This is the idea behind mammography, right? Okay. You said that if you use molybdenum with a molybdenum filter, it's like being perfectly fine with a small breast that isn't dirty. But if we use a greater density or thickness, then you need to increase the energy a bit, right? So what do you do? He said to use the rhodium filter, which is essentially the RH filter, with a K edge of 23 keV E, while the molybdenum was at 20. So what will happen? You have essentially increased the energy range. Instead of outputting 19.4, you have basically included some energy in the spectrum that you actually need. Why? Because the breast tissue has a high density or larger size. So you need to use rhodium to address the issue of increased density or the breast tissue itself. Is that clear? So, molybdenum, molybdenum, molybdenum target, molybdenum filter, or molybdenum target and rhodium filter. Or you can use rhodium itself as a target. Essentially, in essence, fundamentally, primarily, essentially, 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 essentially. Rhodium itself, as a target with its filter in this case, indicates that the characteristic X-ray value of rhodium was higher than that of molybdenum. Let's take a look at the curve here. I don't walk in order, but I walk in the sequence that I understand. As I mentioned, rhodium has a KH of 23.3, and its characteristic X-ray values are 20.2 and 22.7. So it seems like I've increased the energy, which helps me more in imaging. However, there is a point about higher contrast. And what is higher contrast? Low energy and high energy. Low energy is fine, but at the same time, the problem with low energy is that it will have more absorption compared to high energy because it experiences attenuation. The dose for the patient or the minimum land dose or the dose of anything in the world 
is the amount of energy, meaning how much energy was absorbed in the mass. So the energy will be higher even though you are working with high contrast. I gave the highest dose, the highest dose, because the high K has a high penetration power, so it will leave the breast and just go through it. The penetration is high, so it won't absorb like the low insertion. That's why molybdenum, molybdenum, molybdenum targets, molybdenum filters provide higher contrast and higher dose. Molybdenum, rhodium, or rhodium will give you the contrast and the dose afterward. The arrangement is lower in contrast and lower in dose. Now rhodium here means that you have used higher characteristic energy, which results in lower contrast. Since you used higher characteristic energy, it means higher energy, which means higher penetration power, which means your radiation dose decreases, or the alpation dose decreases. They also use something specifically if the patient has an implant in the breast, which is tungsten. Tungsten targets produce the primary x-ray. And with this low kilovolt, you won't produce characteristic radiation. But at that time, they use tungsten with rhodium. And this results in lower contrast because you are working with it. In the range of the software, the rhodium is working in a wide range and at the same time, during this time, your contrast and dose are lower. However, it is used in cases of implants that are present in the breast. Now, if we talk about the screening film radiography, we will find that this is very sensitive. However, sometimes tomosynthesis can use more than one image. If molybdenum is used with tomosynthesis, what will happen? You will find a high dose for the patient because you are not using a single projection. Okay, you said that in this case you can use tungsten with rhodium. Why? Because it will give a lower dose. As for the contrast, I will tell you it's not a problem because in the end it can gather and submit these projections and enhance the contrast especially if you are working with digital radiography, particularly if you are working with digital radiography. Doctor, will there be a concentration used or the same targets available? No, doctor. If you look at the mammography device, you will find that it provides you with the available targets and the existing filter. You can choose the type of filter and the type of target you want. For example, there is a model for GE that you are currently using in stereotactic procedures, for instance, in biopsy cases. This has given me a lot of advantages, as you can choose the filter and the target you want from the screen. The same issue, of course, doctor, you mentioned that in the best image cases, we use raw image defining. Dr. Halibadi said that the environmental conditions will remain stable and that what is not functioning will not be addressed. Using the characteristic is not effective because it will be absorbed since the embolent is already thick. All these embolents will absorb it, so what will reach the detector? I'm working with the spectrum, is that correct? Yes, it's supposed to be that the spectrum I'm working on has a single energy level. Or is there no energy that will pass through when the embolent is absorbed? The goal is for the photon design to become minimal, right? So, it gave me a management for the embolent. Is it high or low, Dr. Honey? High, right? This means it should easily make a high comparison, correct? Therefore, it doesn't need a low energy range to enhance the contrast like the breast that contains fat and soft tissue, which is considered a hindrance. For you, it will only show the sound. Do I need to give a slightly higher dose? I won't need to give a breast pixel card to use it. It will use tungsten more than that. As I mentioned, you are working with the K range. 
because if you use a low K in this case, the transmitted photons will be very few since you will be maximizing the photoelectric effect from the computer. Therefore, the attenuation should not be too high. There should be at least some transmission to provide you with a clear image. Unlike when you are working with low density materials where you actually want to enhance the difference between them and improve it. I saw this information, meaning, I saw this information in the modern GE machines used in stereotactic procedures, which give me these options. Some devices, of course, do not have this. The whole idea is about the cost. I saw that you choose the target and select the filter. But as for the mechanism inside, honestly, I don't know. So if I have tungsten, like for instance, and I want to do a breast procedure, I need to increase it. What should we do then? Happy voice. Doctor, 